there YouTube, Far North Racing here. Let me share something with you that drives me nuts about the X-Carve. Let's say we're looking at the X-Carve face on, like this. Now let's suppose that for whatever reason, the spindle is ever so slightly rotated to one side, just by one degree, like this. Okay, so maybe that's more than one degree. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you get the idea. Well, let's have a look at a little drawing I did. There's a lot going on in this drawing, so bear with me a second as I describe what you're seeing. That light blue box on the bottom, that's your workpiece. The gray bar, that is one half the thickness of a quarter inch end mill. So you're seeing it from the center line off to the left. And what we've done is we've tilted this one degree to the left. We've also got it set up so that the depth of cut on this end mill is three quarters of an inch. So a quarter of an inch wide, three quarters of an inch deep. And I've gone ahead and used Fusion to do some measurements about how far we're off. And if you look really carefully, you can see that because we're tipped over, there's a two thousandths of an inch deep ridge where the edge of the end mill is digging into the workpiece. But more important than that, while at the bottom of the cut we're getting our quarter of an inch wide cut, at the top we're off. So if you consider you've got a step over on a cut of half the thickness of the end mill, so 0.125, at the top of that cut you're actually taking off 0.138. And that's one degree of error. Man, would it be great to be able to correct that error, wouldn't it? The official name for that measurement is called TRAM. It's a measurement of how far off perfectly vertical the center line of a mill spindle is. And on hobby routers like the X-Carve, there's no way to adjust it. The hobby manufacturers like Inventables, what they do is they use these precision aluminum extrusions that are made to really good accuracy. They're actually very surprisingly, they hold their tolerances across their whole length. And they cut them square and they hope that everything just lines up and works. And there's no provision inside of the actual design of the mechanism itself to be able to adjust tram. But if you go to a real mill like a Bridgeport or even a, a PM25 or a Grizzly 0704, those have the ability to adjust the mill tram so that you can get your spindle perfectly vertical. And if you look at that drawing, I've also got a, a mark on there that's half of a three quarter inch surfacing bit that you would use to make your wasteboard flat. If it's not one degree off is seven thousandths of an inch of a ridge and, and that's like two thicknesses of a piece of paper. You'll notice that. There needs to be some sort of mechanism inside the X-Carve that allows you to take out tram error. Well as it turns out I found one. There's a company called TBD CNC who were recently just bought out by Inventables who make a spindle mount for the X-Carve that has an integral tram adjustment built into its mechanism. So I bought one, we're going to install one today, and we're going to see how well it works. So here we are with the tram checker installed, and along the Z-axis, we've got 13 thousandths or so of out of tram angularity, and there's no way with the current mount to fix that. So let's go ahead and install the new tram mount and see if we can't fix that. So here, we have the TBD CNC tram mount with its integrated mounting system for the JTEX photonics laser. And you can see that it's basically, you know, not that much different from several variations of mount out there. Its real innovation is here on the back side. Now let's take this off, make it a little easier to see. Two seconds later. So here's the back side of the mount. And that gives us a little better view onto how the mounting point bolt holes look and how this whole thing works. What we've got is we've got this one here, which is drilled to the normal clearance side. These two are slotted in such a way that, you, that the thing can rotate around that point and pinch up. And down here, this hole is drilled to the right size to fit a standard X-Carve V-wheel cam bolt. And what that does is fits inside the hole here. And now 
using the exact same mechanism you use to adjust the V-wheel tension. By rotating this bolt, you change the center-to-center -center distance on the mounting hole, and that gives you controlled rotation of the whole mount, which then, of course, will allow you to adjust tram. That's brilliant, and I love the fact that it reuses a standard X-Carve part. So the mount is now attached to the Z-slide. I've got this spirit level sitting across the top of the mount clamps, so I can demonstrate how the tram mount works. I'm just going to take the wrench and put it on the cam. So as I turn the cam bolt back and forth, you can see the level changing. Like so. Back and forth. And that means we'll be able to dial the tram in pretty much exactly. So let's try it out. And here we are, post adjustment. Both numbers match. That means we are now perfectly level. There's no longer any twist with regards to the spindle. So that then adjusts us in this axis to just nod in this axis. I have to use these shims like this that go in between the Z axis slide and the carriage. That's the next step. But for now, the tram mount has worked exactly as advertised. And that was really very simple. And that means that I can check tram a lot more often because it's just a simple matter of taking your wrench, slapping it on there, and using my gauge to make sure everything's lined up. Let's have a look at that laser mount now. So in addition to the ability to easily adjust tram by just changing this cam bolt, the other feature I really like about this mount is this integrated replaceable accessory adapter system he's got here, where he makes a series of these plastic things that just clip onto the front of the mount, and now you've got a way to mount things like this laser, or indicators, or various other attachments. And in addition to being able to just use the magnet, like you've always been able to do with the JTEC, the fact that this whole thing comes off means that I don't have to worry about interference with fixtures or the dust boot, like I did with this, which is the standard mount. I had to grind the nose off of this to try and keep it away from my dust boot when it got down too low. And because it's made out of 3D printed plastic, uh, it doesn't like being clamped. You can see there's a big chunk missing out of there. There's a break in there. Did this, it's a nice try, good prototype, no good. And then here we've got this side mount that I tried, but that one uses up too much table space. And of course, I rapided it directly into a fixture and snapped it. No good. This way here makes a whole lot more sense. I'm a big fan of the way this works, and it's absolutely no surprise to me that Inventables bought TBD out because this mount is how this thing should have come from the factory. The ability to have tram adjustment is a, should be a factory option, and the ability to have accessory mounts on the front should be a factory option. I would be very surprised if they don't start incorporating this directly into the X-Carve design because it makes just too much sense. If you have an X-Carve, you need to buy this mount, like I did. Great. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Ding, ding, around one. Ding, ding, round one. Now the battle's begun. Ding, ding, around two.